Well, here we go again. Torn Between Alphas, Chapter 32. So Lola made the guy crash into something, I assume a tree. As usual, Kelly doesn't give a hoot about her own personal safety and having apparently forgotten that the man was trying to kidnap them or whatever, Lola has to remind her that they need to leave. However, Lola was quickly proven right and the guy transforms into a werewolf. Yawn, get a new plot twist. The two of them bowl, but when they get closer to the airport, the wolf stops following them. I would question why it is that they were apparently so close to the airport, but as I keep saying, I don't care anymore. The girls decide not to worry about the other wolf and go into the airport, except that they somehow bypass any sort of security and are just hanging out with some randos at a random gate. Again, not even going to question this anymore because everything is just so painfully dumb. Now that they're in the relative safety of the airport, they take stock of the injuries sustained when the car crash. Kelly gets her wrist bandaged at the first aid station, but Lola refuses treatment. They walk along, and they both talk about how it would be easy for the wolves to hide in plain sight among the humans. And like everything else, this leads to a really dumb argument that makes me question whose side Lola is actually on. They finally go to buy a ticket, but the lady at the desk says that there's no money in the card. And instead, she randomly says that there's a phone call for Callie, even though it's really weird that they just call the airport and get the oddly specific person who was talking to Callie just then. Again, trying really hard not to get hung up over the millionth plot hole in this chapter alone. Also, trying really hard not to scream over how the author seems to think that banks work. You can't just randomly call up another person's bank and say, Give me the money back. That's not how any of this works. I really want to shake the author and beg for her to tell me that she knows this isn't how banks work. But then Colton shows up at the airport, because of course he does. As usual, the comments are nothing but people complaining about how completely and utterly dumb that both Kelly and Lola are over the entire thing. Oh, and remember how in the last video I said that there was like 10 minutes between being able to read the next chapter? Now we've apparently gone back to setting it at an hour. This is so frustrating. I hate this app so much. Why did I even start to do this? And naturally, after I'd waited an hour, the app crashed. Because of course it did. Chapter 33 Kelly wants to know how the brothers found them, which is an excellent question. Mainly because Kelly and Lola took a lot of detours to get to the airport, so it's like, did they hop into their car and were just ho hanging out at the airport in the hopes that the girls would show up there sooner or later? Xavier at least has a presence of mind to ask Kelly how she hurt herself. Because he's such a charmer, Colton makes a crass joke about the entire thing. They argue about the money. They argue about how they've been keeping the girls prisoner for the past two weeks. Lola and Kelly then tell them about the random wolf who picked them up and tried to also kidnap them, but the brothers go on to say that they thought that the girls were acting weird so they didn't actually drink the cocoa Lola made for them, and they took the money back, and once again, that's not how banks work. They continue to argue. One of the boys brings out a knife and they start talking to about getting it past security, which makes me think that the author has not once set foot in an airport in a post-9-11 world. The boys want the girls to come back with them, but obviously the girls would rather just start begging random people for money just to get literally anywhere but there. Kelly then does literally the smartest thing in the entire story. She grabs the knife, slices herself, and then starts screaming about a guy with a knife. Security guards quickly show up and tackle Xavier. Xavier tells Colton to take the girls and get out of there before he's arrested too. More comments about how bad that this story is literally nothing new. And another 48 minutes to wait until the next chapter is unlocked. If I wasn't committed to finishing this just a little bit faster and doing four chapters at once, I'd probably call it a day simply because fork that. Chapter 34 As the three of them leave the airport, Callie finally puts her foot down about Lola just following after Colton. Lola is apparently now back on team Let's Go Back to Captivity where we're constantly being threatened with murder. Kelly was so smart and screaming for help in the previous chapter, but I'm pretty sure that she is allotted exactly one one intelligent thought every couple of days and she used hers up to get rid of xavier but nope instead of screaming for help a second time kelly takes off she runs to the parking lot tries to decide what her best bet would be and eventually decides to take off into the woods despite her acknowledging that colton would be able to track her if she went in there because like i said she used up all of her allotted intelligence in order to ditch xavier however she's captured not even two seconds later by xavier who just left because TSA agents aren't exactly Oregon's finest or anything. Naturally, they all get into a fight over 
uh, wait a second. Now Kelly is literally suicidal because this is what happens when you imprison somebody for two weeks and then track them down and threaten to murder them. Plus, Kelly also throws out random tidbits about her sick mother, which I'd like to remind you that said mother hasn't been mentioned since before Kelly and Lola left home. However, despite the fact that Lola was on Team Let's Go Back to Captivity, where we're constantly being threatened with murder, not even five minutes ago, Lola is now suddenly Team Anything But Killing Yourself. And I get that you don't want to have your friend die, but... <sighs> This is Callie jumping out the window all over again. You cannot emotionally torture people for days on end and then be surprised when they're willing to do anything, and I mean anything, in order to get away from the situation. She runs off and Xavier follows her. She picks a fight about this murdered girlfriend and he casually mentions that it was premeditated murder and not some accident or anything. She calls him out on his nonsense, reminding him of how not only he keeps threatening to kill her, but the fact that there are now two other wolves who are also trying to murder her. She runs off yet again and then encounters a random wolf. She tries to attack it, but the wolf turns to go when Xavier shows up. Kelly begs for the wolf to kill her now. She then asks Xavier to let Lola go, that she doesn't even care if she dies so long as Lola is okay. He tries to take her to leave the forest, but Kelly is pretty sad on death at this point. 42 minutes until the next chapter. Chapter 35 When Kelly and Xavier return to Colton and Lola, they find Lola in a state. Zero sympathy, babe. She also lays on the guilt really thick, which wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for you. Not only was the entire thing all Lola's fault, but like, Lola changes her mind about if she wants to stay or not every other chapter, so I have a hard time taking anything she says seriously. But what else is new? But because there cannot be room for actual character growth or learning lessons here, the girls instantly forgive one another the second that they have a moment of peace. The brothers are on edge, partly because of the random wolf Kelly encountered in the woods, partly because it was done for Xavier to go back when the TSA agents are still looking for him. They get into the car where Kelly spends a lot of time thinking about all the times Xavier keeps promising to kill her, like literally not even two minutes earlier when they were going through the woods. They go back to the house where Violet comes out. The brothers order her to go back inside and rest. As they're just kind of standing around outside for no real reason, the random wolf from the previous chapter comes out of the woods. The brothers order the girls to go inside, so they go. And that's it! I've made another video! I'm that much closer to being done with this.